Hello. Happy Friday evening. Welcome to this week's Future Proof Plays. I am playing the game that you can see on screen called Black Haven. Gregory is in chat. Gregory is the other half of Future Proof Plays. Sorry, Future Proof Games. I always do that. Uh, which is our little uh, indie game dev studio. Uh, we make small games that focus on um, what we call audacious compassion. So helping, uh, hoping that, that people playing can find the alien to be human and connect with characters and other people. So <laughs> declining old estate is ridiculous. Yeah, we will see. Uh, so this is Black Haven. This is the first game released by a company uh, called Historiated Games. Um, it just came out last month. Uh, in fact, last month to the day. Uh, so this is going to involve race uh, and American history. And I don't know what else. I'm diving in blind, sight unseen, I should say. Should be maybe two and a half hours, so we should be able to finish it tonight. Um, I started it just to make sure it works good. It does. And it has voiceover, so I probably won't have to read this entire evening. So, let's get cracking, and then somewhere along the way, I'll chit chat about news items that we have. I'll delete my short little game and start over. Oh. Yes, Mom, I'm gonna be here all by myself. Yeah, cause they're closed for Flag Day. I don't know if they're gonna be closed for MLK Day too. We start the earliest of any of the HBCUs. I'm never gonna be here for that anyways. Plus, I don't know if I'm even gonna wanna be here. I might just stay in Greece. Psh, yes, you would too come visit me. Yeah, all I do is answer the phones. This is supposed to be a marketing internship, but I haven't even done anything on the website yet. No, I don't know how to make a website yet, but neither do they. I'll get to that in spring semester, after I get back from Greece. All right then, Mom, I gotta let you go. You know how strict they are about being on the phone, and I am a model employee who's getting an outstanding recommendation. Okay, Mom, love you too. Bye. Okay, better go check my email and get started. So, thank you, Greg, for the acronym explanation. So, we're in Blackhaven Hall. I can try going in some of the doors. Better check my email before looking around. Oof, this is a uh, slippery walking situation. Uh, oh, that's right, there's a zoom key. Blackhaven Hall through the centuries from 1640 through to the modern era. There are entirely white folk running this place. All right. Do I have a backpack? I don't think I do. I do not think this is a quote unquote backpack game. So we heard about this game on Reddit uh, post by the, the designer um, and they talked about how they like looked at sort of mansion and museum restoration projects to sort of build this space um, so that's pretty cool my plantation 
After Blackhaven, don't forget to, oh, to visit Historic Oakmont Plantation, home of minister, financial wizard, and agricultural innovator, William Harwood. It's a good name for an agricultural in innovator. Really, the Civil War romance. Gideon Harwood and his wife, Anna. How do I escape? Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, this is a this is a very, very good feel of a of a museum. Okay. Look at the grounds. Oh, cute. Agriculture innovator from Virginia who was in the Civil War. <laughs> Y'all, this mansion is gonna be full of some history. Servants' quarters, ballroom wing, where are the... Ah, whoa, way the hell out there. Hope no one wants a cup of tea in the middle of the night. I don't know what a dove coat is. Clearly something people don't want near their house. Very low admission fees. Good morning, Thomas. I see you up there looking down at me. Ooh. It's me. All right. All right, Helen, what you got for me this morning? Flag Day again. Biggest blowout bash of the year. Celebrating Flag Day in style with all the Black Haven family. Because Fourth of July is always one of our biggest visitor days of the year. Uh, Historic Society chose another patriotic summer to show our appreciation to all of you. Once again, we'll be celebrating the Tidewater Country Club. Woof. Good, good pull on that one. Uh, just off Highway 60 past the interchange will be grilling Black Haven style with catering provided by the club and open bar and plenty of festive activities. A garden party attire is expected. Ladies in white, men in navy. But everyone should bring their most creative starred and striped accessories. Y'all. This is too this is too much. Uh, this will be a better way to scroll. Since most of you are members of the club already, also don't forget to bring your swim trunks and you can see Phil or Debbie if you want to, to set up tea times before or after lunch. Ooh. All right, let's go to the welcome. Uh, formally congratulate you on starting your first day. You should be very proud of yourself to have received this opportunity. I'll be coming by first thing in the morning to go over the basics. I uh, want to pass along some ground rules. Make sure you're in your seat, visible, and smiling all shift except during your scheduled breaks. Answer every call to the desk with good morning slash afternoon. Thanks for calling Blackhaven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Remember, you're going to be the first point of contact for our guests, so always maintain a dignified tone and no slang. So I guess you don't get to answer the phone with would it do? A reminder, our dress code is business casual, so avoid any loud colorways or accessories, and make sure to keep hair neat. <laughs> uh, you are technically consenting to be filmed by our cameras throughout the day, but I wouldn't fret about it. Bill only even looks at those if there's an irregularity with door entries and exits. Always follow directions closely. We run a tight ship and don't have to ask twice. Whoops. I have worked in a place with rules like this. Ooh, all right. Um, let's see. Thank you for holding down the fort. I'll pass along your special assignment. I hope you can get through all these since you have the place to yourself with no visitors. Okay. This is our to-do list. I heard from our consultants that most of the new apps have completed uploading on our digital guide devices. I'd like you to test the gallery quiz app and make sure you can get through it without any issue. It'll also be good for you to brush up on the museum collections. All right. 
It's a gallery app. The new audio tour files should also be uploaded. So why don't you go up to the big house and test all those out. Make sure to listen to the end of each and let me know if you notice anything odd. I told maintenance to activate your badge for the house for today, even though it's otherwise locked up. All right, so audio tour and catch the endings. If you can get both of those done before lunch in the afternoon, I'd like you to continue your document scanning in the archive so we can finally start getting some of our stuff up on the website. Maybe you'll be able to help us a little with the coding. Well, we'll see. And can you hit the following folders? I've pulled the boxes for each and left them out in the archives for you. Thomas Harwood folder. Do, 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 do. Make sure you read through each of the pa pages before scanning to make sure they're all legible. And please don't skip any pages. I've left the archive key for you at the front desk. When you finish, please return to the top drawer in my office. Your badge won't open any of the doors in the office wing after 5 p.m., so it's important to get it returned before then. Also, the security cameras will be on today, so don't get any wild ideas, like having messy hair. Uh, we'll all look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Between you and me, you're the lucky one, not having to listen to our donors go on and on at the picnic. Y'all. All right. Okay, can't get into the recycle bin. Can we browse anywhere else? Don't think so. Okay. I'm not invited to the picnic. Reading email in a game is fun. I am somewhat concerned about the fact that it's 2019 and they are running Windows XP. That's, that's a problem. I'll start by testing the gallery quiz. Let me grab a charged digital tour guide. Oh, geez. Okay, so same bullshit. I guess I should be tidy. Actually, I'm not going to be tidy. Okay, got it turned on. How much did they pay to get their logo on here? Let me get my headphones. I'm gonna assume those are earbuds. To the gallery. Let's get this quiz going. Ah, Greece, Greek culture and commerce. Cool. Study abroad. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's go exploring. Achievement unlocked, rise and grind. Make sure your hair is neat. Gallery quiz. Got it. Oh, how beige. <laughs> mm, okay, scan the object that answers the question. Alright, first one. Let's get this. You added the famous column porch to Blackhaven Hall. To do, to do add two flanking halls and then you'll sizable fortune column facade uh, scan an object code. Okay. 
Literally the first painting. Not too tough so far. Which one is Sarah again? Is she the kid? I need a family portrait. That's not a family portrait. Up there we go. Oh, hey there. <laughs> I wonder if this is the first time it's ever been just you and another black girl here. What stories must you have about these people? I will say, at least they do not have a black person grinning. Who's who? Uh, Sarah is assuming left to right. Unknown servant. All right, so we got gold. Game is not subtle, no. For when you want to sit up really straight with two friends. I like it. Servants, huh? <laughs> Ruins of the servants' quarters. Hmm, it's gonna be something with a placard on it. Not the books. Did those have? No. Okay, they don't have enough info on them. Uh, tinkering of scientific stuff. Legend of Farmer Joe. You're not going to read The Legend of Farmer Joe. Is that a Christ? What is this? Oh. Hmm. Considerations on the seizure of rightful property. Thomas Harwood was a fierce supporter of individual liberty and the promise of American dream. His love of English culture initially left him reluctant to support the Massachusetts rebels. But when Governor Dunmore threatened freedom and local property rights in Virginia, Thomas became an enthusiastic revolutionary, even paying to publish his pamphlet, Our Present Crisis, where he penned his most favorite, his most famous phrase, without property, no man lives free. Rose are going to be discussed in the post-war section. Yeah, let's see. So I didn't like their looks. Simple farmer, remember the house? Purchases. <laughs> yeah, local property rights. Uh, so is there, did I miss any labeling about post-war? New discoveries about the daily life of colonial Americans are being made every day by the Black Haven Hall Historical Society. In addition to our research programs and our collection of the Harwood family paper, the Society has sponsored multiple archaeological archaeological digs over the years. Below are just a few of the wide variety of recovered artifacts that Black Haven's residents left for us to appreciate today. Hmm, is there a Am I missing how there's no additional info here? I must be missing something. After
after the total destruction of Blackhaven Hall by fire, many called to rebuild, but the ever-defiant Thomas Harwood vowed to leave the ruins standing as a reminder of British treachery. Uh, fortunately, there is a zoom button. That will help with the font. Unfortunately, the last master of Blackhaven would never see a new home as Thomas succumbed to a strange illness and passed away early in 1782. His wife, Sarah, moved herself and the children to Maryland to live on her family's live on her family's estate and eventually sold most of Blackhaven property to William Harwood, Thomas's brother. William's son, Timothy, would later build nearby Oakmont Plantation, the current home of the Harwood dynasty, and incorporate the Blackhaven lands and staff into his farm. Blackhaven ruins. Yeah, staff. So that is as zoomed as it gets. To me, I could see it being like any of those items that don't look fancy. Oh, like that bracket? Oh, yeah. Okay, the staff. There is a very large step that I take when I move one press of the button. Hmm. Okay. So. Do another quick look. It's not going to be those. Is it Officer Sword? Because it could be something that shouldn't have been there. Family picture. Me labels on that thing in the center of the. Oh, son of a bitch. Thank you. I walked around this thing how many times? This is for sure it. Yep, excavated from the servants' quarters of Blackhaven Hall. My apologies. Uh, this lantern has a treasured place in Harwood family lore, as it was rumored for many decades to have been the one carried by the folk hero Farmer Joe during the Battle of Blackhaven. Its actual origins are unclear, as Wreckage Show is first discovered sitting in an old barn on the property in the late 19th century. Also, unlike the glass lanterns often depicted in popular images of Farmer Joe, punched tin lanterns were designed primarily to protect a lit candle from the wind while outdoors, rather than to provide one with illumination. Unknown artist. Yes. All right. Nah, come on. Did that? Which object was discovered in the ruins of the servants' quarters? Uh, this has to be it. Do I try and scan it again? Sitting in an old barn. Hmm. Okay, so there must be something else. None of those had readable signs, in a sense, in the same way that does. Um, this one was not found in the ruins. Books were not there. Silver, no. I'll circle back along that wall in a second. Actually, let me. Is there a placard for this mirror? No. Hmm. Aha! Teapot. There we go. Unknown artist. Archaeologists at Black Haven were stunned when they unearthed this broken but complete teapot while digging at the site of the servant quarters. Far too fine for the simple concerns of staff. Researchers eventually determined it belonged to the porcelain collections already on display in this very gallery. 
No one can be certain how the Tiabat got so far away from its rightful owners. But one theory suggests a clumsy servant may have broken it and hidden it away to avoid taking responsibility. That's, that's a whole lot to unpack right there. I like this better than the unbroken ones. I bet there was more to this story. Probably right. So aside from anything these people made up, <laughs> works the point of Shakespeare. Whoops, let me not accidentally scan something. Uh, long gone, unrecognized, one of the most learned men in America. Staggering intellect was fueled by his collection of thousands of books, at one time the largest library in the entire colonies. Thomas's interests were universal with books on poetry, drama, history, history, architecture, agriculture, etc., etc., etc. Tragically, the majority of these volumes were destroyed, uh, but thanks to Harwood's famed generosity, a few volumes he had generously loaned to friends survived. I mean, it's got to be Shakespeare, right? Architecture, astronomy, I mean, some of that shit's probably not legit. Yeah. This is fucking dark. <laughs> Unless, well, this could be wrong. If they want to get weird and fancy and say something about, like, the stuff they were publishing... Othello, it's like ninth grade all over again. Except Miss Hayes isn't looking right at me asking if anyone understands where Othello is coming from. <laughs> He's made up, right? So doesn't that mean all of them? Or none of them? Yup. Huh. Content warning for the topic of slavery apparently violates Twitch's moderation policy. Well, that's fun. Okay, uh, let's see. Spring, fears are realized. Thompson and the rest of his family barricaded themselves inside Blackhaven, uh, exchanging musket fire with boots below as they shelled the mansion. Okay. Which object might have been used? Popular legend tells of Farmer Joe, loyal field hand who rushed back into the burning house to retrieve its treasures, dragging them one by one onto the lawn until the smoke was too thick to continue. Historians have debated the authenticity of the story for decades, and the first mention of Farmer Joe only appears in the memoir of Rebecca Harwood, written shortly before the Civil War. Yeah, I think it's that lantern over there. Um, 18th century records do list one worker, Scotch-Irish immigrant named Joseph Murphy, who indeed might have contributed to the legend of Farmer Joe. In the years since, Farmer Joe has attained mythic status. This one, yeah, thought to be used. Somehow, this doesn't seem like it'd be very bright. This one has got to be easy. Gotta be the weather vane, right? Let's see. That's them leaving. This is not doing it for me. No bald eagle available. <laughs> Although swans definitely did some messed up stuff in mythology, says my A plus in that class. She's not wrong. This is a real bougie way of saying fake. What object is the only modern reproduction in the gallery? This is an interesting in-universe way to get players to understand the context. We're likely to do with EZD. Yeah, I think I think it's an interesting approach. Um, like you said, it's not subtle, which I think one could also say of Exploit Zero Day. Um, modern reproduction. This looks too new. No.
Hmm. Probably not that flag. Family portrait. There we go. This lets you see all the stuff you already got, only lower quality. <laughs> Watch out, guests. Which, we got a math question. Which candlesticks are younger than Elizabeth Harwood? You know, I, I don't know if I have been to a plantation museum either. I kind of actively avoid them, to be honest. It just sounds exhausting. It sounds like it'd be about like this. All right, so now we got to figure out when homegirl is born. Elizabeth is youthful in 1780. Well, I'm actually going to need a more precise. I mean, actually, it's got to be. Uh, See, so I've been to Colonial Williamsburg, which is not subtle. I'm going to put in the mind of the residential school exhibits at the Heard Museum in Phoenix. Oh. Yeah. Yes. There's. I can. Except. Except this museum is unaware that it's not good. <laughs> uh, I think the Herd Museum is trying to be good and achieves it, right? Like, yeah. Um, okay, so if kiddo is, what, five-ish, six-ish, there's got to be numbers, right? They wouldn't just have you have to guess. Timeline back here. These are all about dudes. Candlesticks. No candlesticks. Okay, so I think I just pick the newest candlesticks. Are we sure one of these <laughs> Thank didn't you, burn down Black Haven? <laughs> <laughs> what did Thomas Harwood write in response to the Virginia governor? That is our present crisis. So, is he saying nobody my age gets to be free? I was gonna be like the couch, but we already did that one. <laughs> Which artifacts pair nicely with Black Haven tobacco? Bourbon? I don't. I'm not sure I understand what people. Is there a jacket? That doesn't look like a smoking jacket. Huh. I don't know if I understand enough about smoking. Um. Tea set. No pipe there. More papers. Let's skim around. I'll try not to move the mouse entirely too wildly. There is there are no setting. I don't think there's a setting for acceleration. That's probably unpleasant. Let's see if there's a pipe over here. Cup, cup, cup. Pipes. 
clay pipes. Where are the Black Haven vapes at? <laughs> yes, made it. I've won absolutely nothing. This is why I'm running stuff today. Now I'm about to go check this off my list for Helen. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Absolutely nothing. I need to go check the quiz off my list at reception. Quiz is done. Literally the first person to pass. Time to head outside and get that audio tour. All right, let me prep another cup of tea. Uh-oh. Oh no. Good morning. Thanks for calling Black Haven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Oh, uh, hi there. Uh, I had a question. Is uh, Catherine there? I usually like to talk to Catherine. I'm sorry. She's not working today. Well, that's fine. Uh, I'm sure you can help me, Sandra. See, the thing is, I have a question about Thomas Harwood's military service. As you know, in 1765, well, I... Thomas Harwood was listed as captain of the county militia, who by all accounts wore the traditional pewter waistcoat buttons. But at a local auction, I have come across a brass button claiming to be from Harwood's unit. So what I need you to tell me is... Actually, sir, I'm just... Because what I was thinking was, maybe this button is not from the county militia, but from the county enlistment of U.S. regulars. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, in Blanchard's, he shows that... Uh, oh, oh, wait, actually, the French scouts who were stationed with the U.S. regiment did have brass buttons, and they camped at Black Haven in 1781, so that explains it. Uh-huh. Wow. Deidre, you have just been a huge help to me. Just absolutely fantastic. I cannot thank you enough. Keep up the good fight. Semper Fi. You're welcome. Here's a trick. In a situation like this, if you're not sure of someone's name, don't fucking say it. Just don't say it. Home Skillet could have made it all the way through that call and not attempted the protagonist's name. All right. So we are going outside for an audio tour. I guess we're going this way. Oh. Ooh, finally my chance to read up on Black Haven all by myself. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Everything is so cheap. This is where, this is where the game does not succeed at pulling off museum feel. Every postcard needs to be $5 a piece. Every mug, 15 or 20. Although, they're moving in that direction with that teapot. The scented candle there, right? Yep. Christmas at Black Haven Hall. Cookbook. Black Haven ablaze. How one fiery night changed the course of the American Revolution. Yeah. Master your life. Hmm. Maybe, maybe master's not the word to use there. <gasps> Colonial dolls for every girl. Pick the one that looks like you. All right, this game, this game is doing a lot. <laughs> Doll babies, yes. All right, let's uh, let's go partake of the audio tour. Okay, back to start. Audio tour. Scan the QR code or need a plaque to hear a guided tour. This is totally gonna ruin my Spotify.
That's impressive. Uh, let's see. Assuming that this game will add some sort of present day intrigue. I believe so. Uh, I, the fact that we were told to make sure to the, listen to the end of the audio clips suggests, oh, I mean, and the, the trailer suggests of the game, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Don't hate the view. Let's do this. Welcome to the Blackhaven Hall Historical Society audio tour. I'll be your host throughout your journey into the world of Thomas Harwood, America's forgotten founding father. You can begin walking towards the house now. We recommend you take the path on the left. You can pause or restart each tour stop at any time. This means I have to take the one on the, the right. Screen on your personal digital tour guide. Once a stop is finished, just scan the QR code on another plaque to continue. Your digital device will show you the remaining stops you have left to visit. You can also rescan any plaque to hear its tour stop again. For the moment, let's forget the present and travel back to 1781 at the height of point, the American Greg. Revolution. You're now walking along the same grand entrance path that guests to Blackhaven took towards the mansion after passing through the gate of the large brick wall that surrounded this yard. Blackhaven was not right. always so imposing. In the 1600s, this land was used mostly by small tobacco farmers who bravely crossed the ocean to start new lives in Virginia. But on a misty night in 1644, many of those lives ended when a band of treacherous Indians launched a sneak attack, ruthlessly killing even women and children. Still to this day, some say you can see the ghosts of these families trying to find one another. Some even without their scalps. Okay, that's what we need a content warning for. Harwood. He smartly purchased discounted lots and began the story of Blackhaven as we know it. Holy we'll continue fuck. our tour at the top of the hill. Do we have Damn, to? Damn, are they all going to be that long? Or have ghosts? <laughs> Y'all, this is me running. We have it. We're not at the top of the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Just, just racism. Oof. Hmm. Since item two is grand entrance, I could have found it from the other side. All right. I thought the last one was the grand view. You've now reached the grand circle of Blackhaven Hall, where visiting carriages would parade. But in 1781, there were additional buildings. To the left stood the kitchen, built freestanding to keep out smells, smoke, and protect against fires. British cannon, however, were another story. To the right stood the fine stables, housing beloved animals, including Eleanor Harwood's legendary horse, Duchess. Let's take a closer look at the house. This okay. girl really named her horse Duchess. So we will be doing a loop. No, why would they do that? Actually, the servants' quarters would be out near the original building that, that we started, I think. But yeah, no. So this, um, if I recall correctly from the Reddit post, this glass structure is like based on a specific restoration of thing that is happening in the world in meat space and there's a video maybe of 3d modeling sort of showing all that happening should have 
grabbed a link to the Reddit post for the stream. Let's see, first Blackhaven Hall was smaller, but still elegant. Oh, I know this style. Ionic, I think. M no, Doric. Greece, you didn't hear that. Guess you better know your columns before you go to Greece. Before we go in, step back and take in Blackhaven Hall. This house is an example of Georgian architecture, named after British kings like the tyrant King George III. This style features symmetry, balance, and Greco-Roman influences, but with little ornamentation. Thanks to a state-of-the-art structural glass restoration, Blackhaven now has regained its original form. This striking, award-winning design by international firm JJC Architects duplicates the original porches, peaked roof, and top rows of dormer windows. Completed in 2019 at a cost of over $20 million, the restoration received funding from Harcorp Industries and its CEO, Thomas Harwood III, and is even LEED certified. Let's go inside. They're really trying to boost the environment on a tobacco plantation. Better than the alternative, I guess, since they would have done it anyway. to get the reception desk up in here. You're now in what was once one of the finest rooms in all of Virginia, with elaborate oak carvings handcrafted by Blackhaven carpenters. Straight ahead is the grand staircase, matching the exact dimensions of the original. You might be wondering at this point what's under your feet. Below is one of the vaulted Blackhaven cellar rooms. You can explore the cellar in a later stop. No, thank you. The open spaces to the right likely held parlors for the Harwood family to relax together. Let's go through the doorway to the left, into the former Harwood dining room, where meals were brought from the kitchen every day. Operating an 18th century household was hard and thankless work, requiring cooking, cleaning, lighting fires, and managing staff. But according to Thomas's diary, his wife, Sarah, did so always with a smile. To see how Thomas showed his gratitude, hmm. head through the door to the outside. Yeah, Sarah must have really thrown her back out for everybody. <laughs> huh. She did it with a smile. Uh, the lead thing is funny. I, I see that word every day at work, because I work for a construction company. Uh, but I don't know that I could have rattled off what it meant. It's just always in its acronym form. I mean, I know what it means, but like rattled off the letters of the acronym. This space was arguably the largest ballroom in the colony, outshining even the governor's mansion in Williamsburg. Thomas built it for his wife, Sarah, who although careful and pious, Loved entertaining, especially at the annual Harvest Ball, a must-attend event for every Virginian. The impressive marble fireplace that kept dozens of dancing couples warm is one of the few fixtures to survive the Blackhaven fire. Thomas wrote regularly to General Washington throughout his life, which may explain this fireplace's similarity to one at Mount Vernon. If you're interested in trying to dance yourself, you can scan the bonus plaque to hear an 18th century minuet. Try your luck at dancing the pattern. Let's head down the stairs. I gotta start watching and see if people actually try to do this. I mean, children do try to do this. So, I also see, like, the letter N here, and then maybe an O, but I don't, I don't think... I mean, if there's supposed to be some spooky shit happening here, then I, I 100% believe you. I think, I think it could be. <laughs> Heading down the stairs, they said. Stairs inside.
turns out there's some of the witness stuff going on. No, stairs have to be outside. And I just missed it. Because that looked like... Oh, I can't go down there. Oh. Okay, those are stairs. above has become known as the defiant gate because its majestic and haunting shape survived the Blackhaven fire so popular with visitors that many would break off pieces to take home as souvenirs the elaborate carved doorway you see now is actually a reproduction installed in 1954 though some still mistake it for the original the gate well, is also hanging out weddings, and local superstition says no unmarried couple can pass through together or their love will be forever broken. This legend may stem from mm. Eleanor Harwood, who refused to dance with her fiancé in Blackhaven's ballroom before they were wed. In the spirit of freedom, we'll let you do as you please, but we are not responsible for any broken hearts. Head around to the rear side of the house and look for the stairs to the cellar for the next stop. Don't worry, my mom would be trying to break off something else if I tried to get married here. <laughs> Yeah, I guess they also don't like polyamorous folks. Unsurprising. Let's see. Cellars, basements. I mean, I know there's glass above part of it. How come that warning of the curse comes after you've already passed through? I know, right? What if you had been with somebody? Huh. A lot of eights. It's just eights. 1887. Infinity symbol, which is, I mean, it's an eight, but like. Timothy. 3G. Y'all. There's some shit. Leave your mark. I mean, not. <laughs> of course. 8-8 eight, eight is a famous hate symbol. Huh. So, maybe that's what this is. I, I do appreciate the dick picture that of course oh it also has an eight in it <laughs> uh come on guys it's usually just the balls or the name it's actually kind of impressive to get them both on one of all the stops on our tour this is the one that looks closest to how it might have in 1781. That's the hilarious, given all the writing. stored all the beer, ale, and imported wine the family needed to entertain in the ballroom above. If you look up now, you can see the first level where we stopped before. You may also notice curious drawings on the cellar walls. Visitors to the Blackhaven ruins notice the central symbol, naming it Harwood's Lucky Eight and the shape has come to represent the resilience of the Harwood family. Although Thomas loved codes and ciphers, we don't know who drew the original, and many subsequent tourists added their own variations. These are now their own history, and protected by glass, but you're welcome to add your own on our post-it wall. It really doesn't look like an eight, though. Also, eight stars in that circle. Eight dots <laughs> R.I.P. Kobe eight candles huh okay okay so we're shaping up to a little bit of a little bit of a thing here I don't know M mate in
All right, I'll leave this for now. 1781 is listed as it's 1887. Okay. Just too busy looking at eights. Uh, this can't be good. Glad there's no jumping. <sighs> okay. They must have told me to go back outside. I could get used to this view. Plantations like Blackhaven often had their own ports for shipping tobacco. So for many visitors, this rear side of the house was the front. Workers would roll down large barrels called hogsheads to be loaded into the tall ships bound for the Chesapeake Bay and out to the Atlantic. The distant riverbank is dotted with small creeks and inlets, including one shady pool that may have given Blackhaven its name. During the 19th century, a legend arose that Samuel Harwood had done business with pirates and had allowed them to bury their gold beneath one of the riverbanks. In hard times, treasure hunters can still be sometimes spotted, although now with metal detectors. One treasure we know existed was the spectacular walled garden that once stood between here and the river, full of exotic plants and flowers to support Thomas's study of botany. Now, let's head back inside. This time, Take the stairs all the way to the top. They really need to do the garden next. That would be cool. Yeah, the uh, Brook Green Gardens plantation exhibits, which are positively low key compared to this in terms of its. the degree to which it is willing to be ostentatious about things. They said go all the way upstairs, but there's nothing to scan on here anyway. Pillars of a Dynasty. Here stand the only of Blackhaven's columns to survive the fire. Made of shaped brick with plaster exterior, this set was moved inside for preservation and replicas incorporated into the facade of the front porch. Alright, so we're going to take these scary ass glass stairs. Could not pay me. This is neat. Oh, I can feel being up here in my stomach. From this observation deck, you can see the sheer size of the house, as not even the Harwood family ever could. And how about the view? Spectacular now. In the 18th century, this was simple attic space, storing house goods and overflow visitors. Workers at Blackhaven did gossip about strange goings on in the attic, passing rumors of occult ceremonies and witchcraft. But while the entire Harwood family loved puzzles and secrets, there's no evidence of anything more witchy than a stray broom or two. When you're done admiring the view, head down the stairs to the second floor elevated walkway. Though part of me wants to see if I can make this rock back and forth. Never mind, too I scared. Multiple questions. One, a statement. There's definitely going to be something more witchy here than uh, a random broom. Second, this, is that a bed? Because it looks like one of those things that you see in like a, like a Russian church where like the czar is supposed to sit. Cathedral, I guess. It's also interesting to me that like, I think that this house is not as big. 
like it's not as big as the tour wants you to think it is like there are there are 5,000 plus square foot homes these days that exist and are built by people who just want to have a lot of children uh, so this doesn't feel quite as big as I guess it sounds like it. I mean it is a mansion for sure but from this elevated walkway we can get another marvelous view of the Blackhaven restoration you can head left and walk along the platform on That's your true. way to the front porch balcony. The reconstruction began with the clearing of centuries of rubble, not all of it from the 18th, as many locals had found the ruins to be a convenient dumping pit. Local legends told of Blackhaven servants who were buried alive in the collapse, but no human remains were ever discovered. Once the rubble was clear, architects repaired the brickwork and built the central steel structure to provide support for the glass panels. If you look at some sections, like the glass corner coming up on your left, you'll notice that many plates of glass are actually acting as support columns, maximizing the amount of light and visibility in this innovative restoration. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a good point about brick, Greg. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay, this is a bedroom. Can I get on the bed? Go Huskies. Whoop, well, looks like another stray post-it. Not sure which high school this is supposed to be for. I'm pro dog, though. Huh, field of daisies. My grandma's name is Daisy. She oh, would Lord. hate it here. It's either this funny or balcony scary. Shows the expansive size of the Blackhaven estate. From here to the museum was only the front yard with the entire farm extending far beyond the tree lines to the left and right. The hundreds of acres included multiple villages of farmhands, as well as a carpentry, smithy, and gristmill, each with its own craftsmen. And we are still learning more about Blackhaven even in the 21st century. On the plaque below is a traveling visitor's map of the entire estate, only recently discovered in the Library of Congress in 2006. Now continue back out and take a left into the Harwood bedroom. Hmm. So I think Field of Daisies is number 17 there, right? Like not 18, no eights involved. Okay, my last day, I'm taking a nap here. We can't be sure, but we believe this space was the master bedroom of Blackhaven Hall, where Thomas Harwood and his wife Sarah spent many loving years together. You'll also notice some of the period furnishing on display, including this real 18th century bed, possibly owned by the Harwoods themselves. While the frame is intact, the fabric on display is a modern reproduction. Many visitors admire the bed curtains on these old pieces, but few know their true purpose. In addition to keeping warmth thin and insects out, bed curtains provided privacy between homeowners and any servants. After all, a man of Thomas's sterling reputation would never risk the embarrassment of running into a servant unexpectedly, especially in his honored bedroom. Now head out to the rear balcony overlooking the river for our next stop. Like they know what Thomas was getting up to in here. Yeah. Okay, let's 
right? You are now standing in the same you spot got it, Greg. as Thomas Harwood during the most harrowing night of his entire life, the Battle of Blackhaven. After British General Cornwallis landed in Virginia in 1781, Thomas had worried about the threat of raids and even turned down an invitation to join General Washington in Williamsburg, choosing instead to stay behind and defend the private river homes. Finally, one fateful night, Thomas spotted the tall mast of a British ship over the trees through his spyglass. British agents came ashore, attempting to seek a peaceful surrender and forage. But according to Sarah's later account, brave farm workers fired warning shots before they could even reach the garden. The rest of the family and staff barricaded themselves in the house, with muskets pointing down from every window. Plucky seven-year-old Elizabeth Harwood even risked life and limb to drape an American flag over the balcony, possibly the one now hanging in the museum. As nightfall approached, the British commanders lost their patience and trotted out small cannon and mortars to begin shelling the house. Cannonballs likely hit Blackhaven's walls, although later damage has made it difficult to tell, and aerial shells exploded terrifically in the air. Shrapnel from one bomb apparently broke an attic window and ignited a stack of linens, and Blackhaven was officially ablaze. The Harwoods and their servants fired back furiously, but the British waited for the flames to run their course. As the house filled with smoke, Thomas resolved to stay and become a true martyr for liberty, but Sarah pleaded with him to flee, assuring him that he could not help the new nation as a ghost. The family abandoned the raging fire and escaped into the night. Although we don't know for sure if the legend of Farmer Joe venturing into the burning house to save family heirlooms is true, crucial objects from the house do survive in our museum, whether they were carried or had been stowed away for safekeeping days before. What is certain is that the fire, which later spread to the nearby kitchen and stables, was final and marked a patriot defeat and the end of Blackhaven Hall. Now, head back to the ground level, take a left, and continue to the site of the formal library. That's a lot of patriotism for one family getting their house burned down. <laughs> All right. I'm skimming this looking for clues about anything suspicious. Uh, so where the people slept. 11 p.m. There's commotion. Folks waking up. Uh, envoys are sent to negotiate. Okay. Yeah, nothing, nothing new here, other than much of what was said already. Okay. All right, downstairs. There's creepy ass stairs. loyal workers being allowed guns seems a little sus I would bet that they were not slaves I bet that there was a, a tier of worker that was not oh it's the most interesting room and this is all they've got to show It is heartbreaking to believe that this was once the greatest library in all of the young United States. Filled with hundreds of leather-bound books, scientific instruments, and exotic animal and mineral specimens, the Blackhaven Library was designed by Thomas himself. His collection dwarfed even Thomas Jefferson's, and had it survive, Blackhaven's books, not Monticello's, might have been the basis for the Library of Congress. Lost two were Thomas's brilliant journals, some reportedly written in code, full of observations and experiments that might have rivaled Ben Franklin's. Little of the structure remains, possibly because the books here fueled an even hotter fire. The fire of Thomas Harwood's life would soon, too, burn out. Nearly a year after the battle, he began to suffer again from a mysterious illness that had plagued him for years. He finally succumbed to the disease 
and was buried with honor in Williamsburg before a massive crowd of patriots. Thomas's unexplained death spawned rumors of a poisoning, and even that Sarah had drugged Thomas after he had discovered a secret affair. But modern historians have found evidence only of a loving marriage and theorized that local Tories may have spread the rumors to discredit Thomas. His life now shines as an example to every American, a patriot who loved his wife and his country. You can now head down the stairs and to the left to the final plaque along the trail. They used a lot of ifs for Thomas in that one. <laughs> Silly boasts like best library in early U.S. run me of Mecklenburg County, which is where we live, uh, claiming to have declared independence before the U.S. did. Yeah. Yeah. Whee. I feel like there's got to be something else, right? Like there's got to be a big, a big eight. We still have documents to scan. Maybe something weird in there. <laughs> Is there... Am I good to do the farewell one? Last one. Let's get back and get some lunch. This is the final stop in our audio tour. We recommend you head back to the museum using the left trail. Blackhaven Hall was never to be rebuilt, as Thomas had vowed that the ruins stand forever as a monument to British treachery. Sarah and her daughter Elizabeth went to live with family in Maryland before she eventually remarried. Thomas's brother William Harwood, a farmer and Episcopal minister, eventually purchased most of the estate from Sarah. A few miles down the road, he built his own new grand home at Oakmont, named for the small tree-covered hill nearby. Oakmont's foundations were built by dismantling the Blackhaven lawn and garden walls to make use of the bricks. Oakmont lacked the imposing size and grandeur of Blackhaven Hall, but the Harwoods continued their commitment to defending liberty and free enterprise for every American. Although their loyalties mm. to their Virginian countrymen required them to defend against the Union in the Civil War, the nation mended its divisions and ventured into the 20th century even stronger. Now the family is arguably more famous for Harcorp Industries, a global economic juggernaut, but their story of American success began right here, in the humble fields of Blackhaven. This concludes the Blackhaven audio tour. If you haven't already, be sure to visit our galleries and to pick up something for the special patriot in your life at our gift store. Oakmont Plantation, still the current residence of the sixth generation of the Harwood family, is open for scheduled tours the first and third weekends of every month. And don't forget, both Blackhaven and Oakmont are available for weddings, anniversaries, and corporate events. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit and find your own ways to honor the memory of our founding fathers. As Thomas Harwood once wrote, liberty is entrusted only to them who will work for it. Goodbye. Um, pretty sure there were some people working here who didn't get their liberty. Despite working for it. Hmm. Okay. So that... That, that instructions definitely said to listen all the way through. I wonder if that was to make sure that we didn't like skip the sellers. Ooh, well, that's as good as Blackhaven lunch gets. Probably should get started on my last task. Audio tour is done, so the only thing left is, ugh, document scanning in the archive. Well, I better head over. Oh, no. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling Blackhaven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hello, Kendra. Thank you so much for taking my call. 
I just had a couple tiny little questions about y'all's wedding options. So we are considering a date in September. We're gonna have the ceremony on the lawn with the great big oak trees and the view of the river and the reception in that magnificent new glass structure thing. But my question is, we're gonna have a true flock of bridesmaids and us girls all stomping around all day in four inch heels. We need a place to take a load off away from the boys. And well, we thought it'd be a hoot if we could hole up in one of those little cabins. The cabins? Yeah, you know, the cute little ones with the droopy little chimneys that look like summer camp. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Blackhaven Hall is a large brick 18th century mansion. Oh, honey, I know Blackhaven. I just mean like, when we went to have Cotillion at Shady Grove Plantation, they had those cute little cabins in a row out back. Um, do you mean the slave cabins? Oh, well, I mean, no, I don't think so. You know, we just thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun for you and your girls to put your feet up in a slave cabin? Oh, Girl, you're gonna you lose know, this job. I kept you on the phone far too long. You must be so busy. I'll try back another time. I'm not busy. So thank you so much, dear. God bless. What the f- <laughs> The achievement I got is called I'm not busy <laughs> Whew. How did that caller You know the, the little cabins With the The saggy chimneys Yeah right to servants quarters Kendra ain't gonna make it until she goes to Greece she's, she's gonna lose his job tomorrow once they go back and review the tapes <laughs> all right so this is a 1959 ticket to visit and walk the grounds. It's entirely too big. It seems very unwieldy. Ah, this is Helen. This is my boss who sends the charming emails. Is your hair neat, Helen? I see I see some wispiness. Carpentry. Better finish my scanning before I go anywhere else. All right. Okay. There's the scanning station. Now I have to go find the right box from the archive. Looks like I need Thomas first. I'll leave that there for now. Smooth room transition. Ah, oh, computer out of order. Uh-oh. Let's break it. Alright, so letter said that Helen had already pulled the boxes, so those are by three. Huh. Uh, Look at these. <laughs> Check this pattern. These are so much more interesting than the ones in the case. Why aren't these on display? Wait. Oh my god. Are those? Damn, Blackhaven. Damn. I'm going to assume those are torture devices. Adorable. So, would y'all say 
that these symbols there look like eights turned sideways, like zigzag, 90 degree eights. Hmm. Okay, here we go. This list has which collection is which number? All right. I'm working on a sequel due out in 2022 where you go back in time. Cool. Oh, like hourglasses? Ooh, I wonder if that's connected. Okay, let's see. So we got a bunch of stuff here. It's box three. 14, 14. Three to four, 15 through 20. Is that Thomas Harwood? National Archives. Let's just, let's just see. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> Egg timers. <laughs> I don't think this is the right folder. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. Gotta peek in some corners first. I just know, just know there's gonna be some shit. said not to skip a page. Helen wants me to read to. this closely to make sure it's legible. Okay, Helen wants me to check every page top to bottom before scanning. These are always typed up though, so I don't have to read Thomas's handwriting. I've seen worse. All right, that looks fine. Let me go hit scan on the laptop. Better finish my scanning before I go anywhere else. Uh. All right, there we go. Well, here goes. Time for the genius of the founding fathers. Find the 10 hidden collectible relics of generational trauma. I am not going to read this out loud because. So genius is mostly just breakfast comments, apparently. I love myself. This interface is a little awkward. I'll get the hang of it. I rose at three o'clock to the sound of a great thunderstorm. I guess Thomas does seem gentle with kids, though he put this one to sleep. at 7 o'clock and ate milk and rice for breakfast. She really got lost looking for lettuce in the forest. Poor Pompey getting dragged along and all her white girl nonsense. I arose before 6 o'clock and ate bread and butter for breakfast. Read my Bible, said my prayers for patience and generosity. Now that the unseemly matter with the cabbages has been resolved, Elizabeth has moved to her next fancy, astronomy. Wait, the matter with the cabbages got resolved? Is there a page missing? Better put this back in the box. White girl nonsense, Summer. Look. The backlash, too. Three, four, eighteen. 
19. Hmm. So if there's a missing page. Hey. We... Okay, gotta find the shelf where this box goes. I was gonna start pulling other folders. Ready for the next unlocked. folder. I can look at my instructions in the reading room or the collections index if I need to. Anna Harwood, folder nine. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Could be in either one of these. Nine. Whoops. The button to, to exit is an awkward one. Oh. Whoops. I didn't realize Nightbot was going to start being a cop. I apologize. I will have to take a look at that after the stream. Nightbot is new. So. My bad. Nope. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. I wonder if this will be more breakfast commentary. Okay, next set. Let's read about this scary looking couple. Oh, whoa. They are scary looking. Gideon Harwood to Anna Harwood. Hey, dear Santa, this will be the first letter you receive. It's become apparent to me that for all the skills hmm, of, the southern, of a southern gentleman... Gideon's yeah, handwriting is a lot of work. I shouldn't to... talk, knowing basically no cursive. No, Grego, you'd have to be able to authenticate as me in Twitch, I think, to get to it as far as I'm aware. Hmm. Anna's handwriting is a lot neater, but still hard to read somehow. Like our son, who fears a fall, but will take his first steps to his mother. Fear not... Oh, I can. Well, thank you. I will do so. Okay, so now we have it transcribed. Gideon got rumors. himself stuck out in the cold because he just couldn't give up those slaves. Yeah. Hmm. All right. You're a strong man. Shut your mouth, Anna. Emily <laughs> and Charlotte better keep running. Emily and Charlotte have run off together. But each did the same before the war, and I know they will turn to their infernal kin when their taste for adventure runs dry. Oh, how I wish all the Negro lot were as loyal as Henry. He still carries on running the house and kitchen when I cannot. He'd not run to the Yankees once in ten lifetimes. Whew. 
Okay, actually, this paragraph. Hold on. I, oof, let me... Okay, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful now that Father always kept us informed of our uh, accounts and harvests. He remembered his mother's ingenuity as a widow and would not allow his daughters to go without the same. We do worry about getting the tobacco to market, but you were wise to plant more wheat in recent years. Some of ours may even reach your campfire plate. The darkies ask about the war, but I believe they fear Yankees pillaging more than their steady masters. Of course, Emily and Charlotte have run off together. Woo. All right. Yes, Kendra is pretty cool. I'm a fan of this character. I know you've received word of my condition and my time at the hospital. This is from Gideon. Yeah, this is this. Oof. Uh, I wanted to ease your tender heart, but now I'm able to write for mine and tell you everything I could not dictate to the nurse. Uh, battlefield. Oh, got it's hurt. It's so crazy to think about all this violence and chaos. And then every museum is such a quiet place. Even amidst the terrible din, the world quieted. I can only see the blue sky. This is him being hurt. I should have made my confession, but instead I prayed your sweet name on my lips over and over again. Gideon seems more pleasant than a lot of these people, but definitely racist. Racist as hell. Gideon, my most loving husband. My love for you is eternal. I wish I could be there to cheer you. Whatever may happen, do not mourn your body. Uh, you are a man of letters, a head of fine and the head of a fine and ancient family, thick with friends and rich in my love. All right, I'm not gonna lie; these two are really feeling each other. He's up on Henry, though. My only Gideon. It has taken me weeks, but I must write to you even though you will never read it. You lay now oh, you lay now in some cold spot in some spot of cold earth. The off the officer who delivered the news could not even say for certain where. But my heart knows, because it is there every night every day and every night. Oh Gideon, the light has gone out of my life. For my earliest years I was prepared to be a wife and a mother, and in my youth I could have taken the hand of any man in the state. Damn, girl. And when I saw you, but when I saw you, I knew I would never entertain another suitor. Our boy now says my name, and I tell him yours and show him your picture. He will never know what it means to truly look upon your sweet face, but he will know your image and your deeds. News came recently of our surrender and the death of our newly free nation. Oh, but it troubles me not. Because all my aspirations have died with you, many of the ser servants have stayed back to continue on their farms. After all, they know nothing else, nor are they suited to live without supervision. If my heart were not already broken beyond repair, it would have pained me to see a smiling Henry riding away in a union wagon. But it was <laughs> only now a small slight. Henry knew what was up. Oh, how I curse Yankee arrogance and pride. They have undone my world. They have turned what is true upside down. And still not content, the damned animals have taken you from me. I would wipe ten thousand of them from this earth in a bloody instant and not feel the slightest pang of remorse. You are worth them all, my precious love. I promise you, I will never remarry. I know you are so kind you would wish me another warm bed, but I will not take it. I will live my days with a cool temper and a cold resolve, and dedicate my efforts to never forgetting our cause or your sacrifices. This game was headed up by the history professor who consulted with a bunch of black students and a black professor on the writing. Damn, they got Gideon. But Anna is really out here trying to commit a genocide in his honor.
My only solace is that being so close to death before, you were able to relate to me the true depths of your love. I pray that you were given the chance to say my name as you expired, because I say yours each night and the darkness comes for me, and my eyes close as yours are forever. I cannot realize any joy, but believe me, my dearest, I feel you in the breeze. Anna is so awful, but I can still feel her loss. Why couldn't she feel anything for somebody like me? She felt a little something about Henry. I like how there are image files appearing in that folder on the computer. Better put this back in the box. Okay, gotta find the shelf where this box goes. I think that's a nice little touch. The, like, rotating the box and then in the way that one would to pick it up by its handles. Achieve Ready for the there. next folder. Can I can look stop. at my instructions in the reading room or the collections index if I need to. Folder six. I keep expecting right click to be the exit action, and it is not. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. What fresh hell? Blackhaven Hall. Summary report of battlefield and barn excavations. Nineteen uh, seventy. This one seems more boring. I guess my my tone revealed. I think so too. But there could be some shit about eights in here. Actually, it's circled down here. Okay, just the. These excavations aim to establish archaeological understanding of the 1781 Battle of Black Haven. These accounts in mind. Early use of metal detectors looking for traces of iron and lead ordnance shot and form this choice of I bet sites. that military weirdo from earlier would love this. Sites 1 and 2, main house. Excavation at Sites 1 and 2 focused on recovering mortar, shrapnel, musket balls, or cannon shot. So far, no such materials have been found. Much of the recovered material was related to food production, likely from the daily carrying of meals from the freestanding kitchen building to the main house dining room. Huh. Uh, artifacts recovered from Site 1 were more varied but less intact and are suggestive, perhaps, of an informal garbage pit. Pottery. They never found any bullets from the entire battle? Were they digging yeah, in the wrong place? Me. Hmm. I mean, they couldn't have been, right? Like, the whole story was, we were in the house, hold up, got the windows. The barn. Excavations near the site of the tobacco drying farm focused again on the search for militaria. I guess that's how that's pronounced. Some surviving accounts have made reference to barricades or even more formal readouts. So attention was paid to ground variations potentially left by fortified embankments or ditches. Uh, digging at potential sites revealed, again, no evidence of a military engagement, but did recover post holes and other soil evidence of between five and small, five and something, small timber structures. Although these are not mentioned in the surviving accounts of the skirmish, this appears to have been the nearest slave quarters for tobacco laborers and some house servants. Digging revealed a variety of everyday and agricultural objects. Do 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 do. All right. Hmm. Oh wow! 
This is the teapot from the gallery. On the mutual agreement of both the firm and BHHS, digging at Site 5 was suspended. Suspended? What was all that drama about? Additional analysis was conducted on surviving artifacts. In particular, a set of musket balls from the 19th century collection of Anna Harwood. Using taxonomy for early American ordnance, it appears clear that musket balls do not resemble any in common use by either American or British forces during the Revolutionary Era. The caliber and quality of the shot suggests instead they are from an earlier matchlock musket from the late 17th or early 18th century, most likely the type used for hunting geese or other fowl. Similarly, the brass gorget? Bourget, said to have been abandoned by a dying British soldier, clearly dates from the era of George II and could not have been a relic of the Battle of Blackhaven. It is, however, consistent in similarity to British forces active in the Seven Years' War and may be possible to connect the expedition led by Colonel George Washington in the Fort Necessary Necessity Campaign. Yes, one more scan and I'm all done. Hmm. So there might not have been a battle at all. Better put this back in the box. I mean, if you don't find any bullets from the time in which there was a fight, purportedly. Okay, gotta find the shelf where this box goes. Is that a spot? Nope, not a spot. be missing a gap somewhere or what is the number on this box oh I can't put it back down again those all have different kinds of labels on them oh okay Woo, last one this is a weird little guy stuck back here hmm See what's back here. Mind power, she has to return items so smoothly. Do we have a key? Can I? I think I play too many violent video games. What can I use to break this shit open? Hmm, there might be keys. Let me finish searching these drawers to see if there are keys in here. I think three. Are my keys still in the lock? Well, I did all the pages I can find. And it's almost time to close. Better head over to Helen's office and drop off my key. Is my key... Where did I put my key? This is the luck freaking lawyer. What I have for you today is an old filing cabinet. You are not wrong. There's that. Did I get that one? Torture devices. There are cameras. I mean, I'm gonna lose this job. Oh, you're right. I probably can steal Helen's keys. I do feel like I did leave them in that door though, but apparently not if I can just leave. Hmm. As long as I do it before five o'clock.
Okay, Helen said to leave the key in the top desk drawer. I'm sure there'll be another key. Have we? I. Hmm. I wonder if there are actually cameras. Oh. Welp. Archive key goes back. Huh. Take that I key. I wonder if this goes to that old file cabinet. I'm gonna go try it. Yes. Oh, Helen had her computer on sleep. Better read these fucking emails. Paperwork for Kay Turner. Uh oh. Hi, Deborah. Thanks so much for finishing up with Kendra's paperwork. She's actually going to be staffing the museum all by herself tomorrow. It's a shame for her to miss the picnic, but you know, she probably wouldn't have the right dress anyway. And I'd hate for someone to be intimidated by all the traditions. Plus, we don't need anyone tattling on Steve if he gets handsy after a couple of drinks. I have to admit I was a little skeptical about taking on one of these HBCU girls after the amazing job Catherine did last year. I, uh, I was just so, it was just so nice to have another whatever prep grad on staff, but Kendra helps us score a few diversity points. And with that scholarship program, the only thing better than interns working for free is having the schools pay us. So excited to see you tomorrow. Make my punch a double. I won't tell if you don't. Oh, Helen. Nasty ass. All right, Helen. <laughs> I see how it is. Gross. We are going to open this cabinet. Piss on that picture. Yeah, and fuck Hansy, Steve. Then we're gonna go to the press and blow this whole thing open. Fraudulent ass. It's one folder, y'all. I better have some eights on it. Wait, this is the missing page from Thomas's journal. Why have they got this locked up in the corner? I need to take this over to the scanner and check it out. What else might be in here? Yes, we are gonna read Homeboy's breakfast reflections this time. I'm Maybe here some for this of the mystery. other missing pages are in here. I arose after six o'clock and ate only milk for breakfast. I read in geometry and wrote to our neighbors about the news from Philadelphia. In the morning, can I zoom in further? Okay. This font. Uh, in the morning, I went to see the first leaf cut and hung to be dried in the barn. In my walk through the nearest quarter, I was occasioned. <laughs> I was occasioned with a shock. When what did I see but all of all three of Elizabeth's missing cabbages growing rudely in a Negro garden? I found Joseph in the field and had him pull the culprit away from her duties, and he brought a rather uncomely wench named Patty. She feigned ignorance as to how such a marvelous specimen could be found replanted in her homely plot, when just then her girl Sally ran up to confess she had dug out the cabbages to help her mother, claiming that after a day in the fields, the indolent creature had no time to mind the garden and look for her kin, and would cook for her kin. My temper justly rose, and I considered beating the girl, for not even a gentle f <laughs> wow, holy shit, uh, can be broken to the saddle without the lash. But her mother pleaded so that I saw the wisdom of it. It was Patty being fully grown who deserved punishment for neglecting to train her child. So I had her whipped in full view of the girl, and fed the cabbage to the pigs to show how thoroughly it had been spoiled by the incident. As the base thievery had soured my afternoon, I took a nap on the window couch before, before dinner of boiled beef and asparagus. In the evening, my mirth returned when Sarah played the piano. Hmm. God damn, he beat 
a mother in front of her child and then needed a nap? I knew Thomas was sketchy, but this is messed up. Then needed a Did nap. Did someone take this out to make him look better? Newspaper oh, it's William, Thomas's brother. He had to be jealous of his bro's hair. <laughs> Look at that head. Compiled for the Blackhaven Hall Historical Society. I need to read down to the end of every page. All right. $10 reward. Run away from the subscriber. Subscriber. On the 12th of this instant, my man Joshua, he is about 5 feet 6 inches high, about 26 years of age. He formerly belonged... Okay. Uh, runaway is one word, not two words. Got it. Now it makes more sense. Uh, formerly belonged to Richard Drew. May have been lurking around his farm in Norfolk County, where he had a wife and daughter when he was purchased. That is from William. Another runaway. 47 years old. A cook. Runaway... From Oakmont, Negro woman with mixed race child. That was not that was not the person that was beaten. Uh, Forewarn all persons from harboring said Negro, as in that case they may expect to be prosecuted. Fuck off. I don't know, William. Why would Stephen run? I mean, could Joshua say. was only sold away from his family. And Hannah was branded and missing an ear. And William is the minister? How much Kendra's time do gonna, I have? Uh-oh, there's a camera up there. Kendra's gonna burn this place down. What else had these Blackhaven people hidden away in here? Oh, no. Gideon... Hey. Secret letters from Gideon and poor racist Anna. I hope they took these out because of adult content. All these awful people could at least spill a little tea for me. <laughs> My dearest Hannah, before I can continue even another word, I must tell you to keep this letter a secret as long as you live. In truth, it would be best for you to burn it, but I know you well enough to suspect you would never agree to such terms. My story does not begin with sorrow. In truth, I was recently rejoicing, as I had recuperated enough to leave behind my hospital bed and take my first steps. My gait is uneven and painful, but I must thank our Lord for the surgeon and his nurses, and the nurses, uh, for each considers my walking to be evidence of his miracles. As I slowly recovered, I wished to return to duty, but I was no longer fit to march with the healthy boys. Still, I begged and received a post, uh, a guard in our camp, which was still vulnerable to Yankee raids. Even through my pains, it felt sweet to hold a rifle and keep my post and once again serve my fellow countrymen. Two weeks after my new position, some four companies of our men met the enemy in a fierce little battle not even five miles from camp, where all day the wounded were brought back to the hospital, and with each round came also Union prisoners. Short of rations, as we were already, we were worried about feeding the captives, and we made them to sit in a cattle pen in a clearing where they could do no mischief. I could not have prepared for what my eyes would see next. A full band of a dozen up-jumped Negroes, <laughs> true contraband filth, brought into our camp, clad in the hated blue of, our, of the regular Union infantry. Don't you like people to work for their freedom? At first sight, these black rascals look, looked no more at ease in uniform than apes, but as shock subsided, we began debating what to do. Their presence so inflamed the tempers of every good rebel that we could not put them with the white Union men or have the whole lot torn to pieces in a riot. Instead, I and another handful of guards marched them a few hundred yards away into the nearby woods. Each of us were filled with contempt for these treacherous Negroes, and some in our party even stooped to hurling insults at the beasts, who looked back calmly at us as if deaf and dumb. I wish I could tell you true that our prisoners provoked us, but it is not the case. One of our men, unannounced and inflamed with passion, pulled out his pistol and shot one clean in the head. He fell and his brain spilled out on the ground and his blood leaked into the boots of his companions. 
At least some, at least now, some of the darkies yelled and begged, some dropped to their knees, but there was no saving them. We each in a fury shot the rest without thinking or speaking to each, to one another. At least one of them I killed all alone. I shot him straight in the chest and saw the stain spread out through his coat until the life left his eyes. It was an awful scene, a slaughter, but they did not bleat like lambs. They looked at us with terror and disdain. I have seen so many fall on the field in the commotion of war, but this was different. Truly, it was criminal. Silently, in our relief and in our guilt, we came back with shovels and dug a shallow trench to bury them. The men went through their pockets to claim their effects, and one dropped a fine silver case in the dust. I retrieved it and opened up to a daguerreotype, depicting what must have been this man's plump black wife, dressed as well as a free woman. It was in this moment I was overcome with guilt, for I could see only... Bessie, back at Oakmont, who raised me and my sister, who nursed us, who fed us, and who held us close to her breast. Surely she loved her man in her own childish way. And there he lay, dead in a pile. I still have not reconciled myself to the guilt I feel. War is a brutal business, and I would give any number of lives, both ours and theirs, if those who remained would live free from tyranny. Truly, to preserve God's design and the order of the races, I would have killed ten times as many as we did. But this felt nothing like victory, and I fear that I will suffer some greater judgment for violations of honor and conduct which we committed. I feel no pride in relaying these events to you, but you so value my honesty I can tell you of nothing else. I love you still in this moment. Whip. In the reply, not a huge Gideon fan. Yep, nope. I think, uh... All these folks shitheads woe that I cannot be there to soothe your noble heart it is truly the uh, it is truly the wars are ugly affairs but you remain shining and spotless in my eyes I am proud you have so great a sense of order and decency that you are simply overcome with righteous anger and transgressed even the law to achieve the greater good Ugh. of course you and your compatriots were filled with rage. I see it even now, the thought of ungrateful creatures. We give them so much more than their natures deserve, provide them with not only sustenance and shelter, etc., 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 and I will reward you so graciously, so lovingly, that all these horrors will seem as only the memories of dark dreams on a bright and sunny morning. Not a huge Hannah fan either. I, I just don't know what to say. Gideon shot an unarmed prisoner like a dog, and Anna is sad he couldn't kill more? With ever-increasing love? This bitch might as well have been in the clan. <coughs> Fuck. Blackhaven has had this the whole time. They act like Gideon is a hero. I don't know if I can come back after this. But I have to get my recommendation for Greece. And it's way too late to find something that's going to pay as much as the school, especially back home. Okay, I can read a couple more. The camera keeps if I don't being turn put this in frame. In five, I'll be fired way before I can ask for my wreck. Tide like Water Negro. I wonder what they wanted from Blackhaven. Probably the truth. My name is Dorothy Mitchell, and I'm currently the director of the Tidewater Negro Historical Association. I'm writing to formally request admission as a researcher into the library and archives. Um, so, includes documents, including an interview conducted by the Works Progress Administration with her late grandfather, newspaper advertisement placed uh, corroborating the interview, photograph of a curious artifact passed down through many generations of my family. It's a carving of what I believe to be a bird in African styling, possibly a Sankofa or Sankofa figure. I was told as a child that it had once been owned by Rob, a token from his mother to preserve her memory. I believe research time in your archives would allow me to not only learn more about my family, but indeed the greater contributions of Afro-Americans to the history of Virginia. I need to read down to the end of every page. Fair enough. 
come and hear the Afro-American history of the United woman. States. Is it possible her family are really Harwoods? Definitely possible. As it is customary well, for time for Black Haven to check in. As it is customary for institution to respond in writing to all requests for admission, I am replying to your letter of May twelfth. Black Haven is a professional scholarly archive of the highest standard and does not casually admit amateurs to chase rumors based on hearsay. Frankly, your missive is so speculative as to represent an affront to common decency. Although it is beneath the charge of this body, I am bound to respond to each of your insinuations and defend the, armor of those, the honor of those who can no longer protest themselves. Uh, allow me to be blunt. It is utterly preposterous to suggest that William Harwood sired a mixed race child outside the bonds of his marriage. William was an Episcopal minister, devout and prayerful, there only for his mild temper and cool constitution. Uh... But uh, my further examinations have revealed damning inconsistencies in each of your examples, etc. So in an interview transcript, Rob mentions that the family story that his grandmother uh, would style her hair in the mirrors of the Black Haven ballroom, and that the mirror was topped with a swan. Had you troubled yourself to visit our galleries on the third Tuesday of each month when we welcome Negro visitors? <laughs> You would know that one of the mirrors survives. Our collection features no such swan decorations. Uh, let's see. Father worked in a mill alongside Hickory Creek, uh, but our period renderings of the estate show no body of that with water by that name. Multiple documents instead referring to Black Haven Mill existing next to the such and such streams. You're saying all these fancy words, but I'm hearing is blah, blah, blah. We're a bunch of racists, but we're not going to let you learn that for real. Uh, finally, I was... I am distressed to report that one of our archaeological experts viewed the photograph of your family heirloom and believes it to be a modern forgery. It is true that it shares many of the crude primitive stylings typical to African art, but nothing of a similar appearance has been has ever been recovered in this area of Virginia. Rosemary Lambert. Ugh, Rosemary, you cold piece of sh I'd be mad, but you're probably dead. And you're in a folder that's already full of lies. Maybe you're lying to Dorothy, too. Probably. Information wanted of my family. On behalf of Rob, my father Rob, who is 87 years old, uh, etc. I need to read down to the end of every page. This is so sad. Rob, I hope you and your sister are together now and at peace. Okay, so this is one of the interviews. Uh, lived all my life near the mountains in Virginia. So-called black nationalism. <laughs> but it's something bigger, really, but the HBC owns something like an artifact. Mm -hmm. Lived all my life near the mountains in Virginia. I was born in the 40s. I don't remember the year now. Uh, that's so many's past. When the war came, three generations of my family had lived under them hills. My mother's name is Grace. She had a kind heart, but she never forgot nothing. She would tell us children stories about family and the history of the state. She always took pride in knowing who the president was and would ask me the mas and would ask the master about him. Although I remember she knew well enough not to ask the master about President Lincoln, for it was on account of him that the war started. She told me that my grandfather, who was very old and no longer spoke in the time that I remember him, she told me that he was born on Blackwater Plan Black Haven Plantation. I believe his name was Robert, though I never heard him say it, but everyone on the farm called him Old Rob. She always told us he'd been born way back east along the coast, and he and his mother and he and his mother had been sold out to us when he was a meek infant. She told us lots of stories about her grandmother, Rob's mother, but never about his father. I could tell there was something sad about it. One time I was brave enough to ask, and she said that she wasn't sure, but she believed that her grandfather, Rob's father, had been a white man, the master of Blackhaven. But I never knew any more than that. Our master had some distant relation with the farm, but I believe now they call it Oakmont. I need to read down to the end of every page. Girl. It's at the bottom of the page. 
My mother told me my great grandmother remembered some of her life at Blackhaven, and her husband was a Cooper or Smith who worked next to the mill on Hickory Creek. He used to tell her that her hair was as soft as the moss that grew in the clear running water there. My great grandmother had been working in the house before it burned down during the revolution, and my mother said it was as fine a house as George Washington's. I think she liked telling us those stories because it made her feel like this was her country. Me and mine never felt that way. It wasn't ours for the war, wasn't when the Yankees came, ain't ours now, though I'm glad to be free. Some, anyhow, my mother told me how before my great-grandmother would go to meet my great-grandfather, she would sneak and fix her hair in the ballroom mirrors of Blackhaven, these fine gold things that had swans perched atop them. Then she'd walk all across the plantation and wait to see him outside the mill right after sundown, and they'd watch the last pink light shine on the river. My mother said her grandmother had loved the sunset, but could never take one in again after they sold her west. It felt too much like turning her back on her dear old man. This is a lot of detail for someone this old. Simon doesn't seem confused, and Dorothy's letter is so careful. Look at her. She doesn't look like someone who wastes her time. Also, didn't she say there was a photo of a bird? Did Blackhaven hide that too? Ugh, if only I had a little more time to check. If I don't start walking to the office right this second, I'll never make it. <sighs> Fuck it. I don't care if they know I snooped. Greece has been there for 3,000 years. It can wait a couple more. That's what I was gonna say. Dorothy, you and I are gonna get some answers. All right. Greece can wait. All right, I'm gonna take a short break, refill my water now that I'm out of tea. And then we'll come back and wrap this up. So give me about five minutes and then we shall resume. All right, I'm back. Let's do this shit. Let's get these answers. Let's find these, let's find these secrets they wanna hide. 
All right, that's illegible. Commonwealth of Virginia, Gloucester? Shit like that's always pronounced weirdly. Country. Articles of Agreement made and entered into this first day of January, 1868, between Solomon Harwood of the first part Virgil Riley, uh, oh, of the first part Virgil Riley, Friedman of the second part, okay. Hmm. Okay. Said party of the of second part agree to bind themselves to work for the said party of the first during the year 1868. Okay, so Virgil's agreeing to work for Solomon. Said Virgil Riley and his wife and children have to work on said farm as before the war and cultivate 20 acres of corn, 20 acres in corn and 20 in cotton, keep fences in good order, etc. Hmm, okay. So Can't even as a free man, Virgil and his wife are still picking the hardwoods cotton. Whoops. Oakmont Negro <laughs> jailed for mur attempted murder. Uh, actually, okay, so that says August 2nd. This is January 1st. Okay. So... Virgil Riley's being held in county jail for an attempt on the life of prominent planter and businessman Solomon Harwood. So he seized Harwood's revolver and fired a shot which struck him in the shoulder. Speaking of the attempt on Harwood's life, Riley justified the violence. Quote, my wife has been sick, going on a week and unable to do her work. Mr. Harwood had come to us demanding a dollar each day she missed, and I told him this did not suit me. And after two drought years, we didn't have that kind of money. Two drought years, we didn't have that kind of money. He told me to move my wife from the cabin right away. And I replied it would kill her. She was very sick. He said it made no difference and that he would show me my place. He struck me with a strap and had me on the ground. And I was afraid he would kill me. So I stole his pistol and fired only once. Solomon sought to clarify the matter while resting under the care of his loving wife from Oakmont. Virgil once worked about as well as any Negro, but he has grown too comfortable in his position and has made a habit of indolence. His wife is bitter and preening, probably on account of too many years shared with the ch chicaning? I don't think I know that word. Husband, I suspect a sense of purpose will be, I can't be nice, obviously. Uh, I suspect a sense of purpose will be renewed now that he's to work for the county. Riley faces up to 20 years hard labor for his crime. Every generation of these hardwoods is the same. Virgil was just trying to protect his wife and now he won't see her for 20 years. Mischief making. Thank you, Greg. Oh no. Oh no, this is by Benjamin Harwood. Who founded Black Haven Hall and why? Found as a brave, okay, so this is some of the nasty shit we heard on the tour. Uh, response to a so-called purported massacre. Uh, how did Thomas contribute to American independence? He was a fierce patriot who wrote in defense of liberty and property yeah, so this is stuff. Uh, was slavery the cause? Okay, what was the cause of the war between the states? Disregard of the Northerners for the rights of Southern states. Was slavery the cause? No. Was it denial of self-government? Ooh, gets them all caps. What did the South fight for to repel invasion and ensure independence, just as Thomas Harwood and the Founding Fathers had done? Uh... Oh, yes, the, the religious significance of the, the titling, I think, is important here. Okay. What is the aim of the Black Haven Ladies Association and this, is it catechism? That's not a word I hear said very often. I don't know how to pronounce it, but yes. I associate it with Catholicism in particular. Uh, to teach the true history of Black Haven Hall, Oakmont, and all of Virginia 
to every growing boy and girl. I gotta give them some credit. Nearly every one of these questions is disproved just by the stuff in this folder. Monument unveiling. Confederate monument. Inspiring address by Benjamin Harwood. It is said that the meek shall inherit the earth. I'm just reading the last little bit. And little could young boys like Gideon have known when they left the comforts of their home for their humble duty that they would make true the scriptures for us today. It is with only a fraction of the same nobility that I inaugurate this monument to stand for all time. Young boys like Gideon. Mr. Johnson always tried to say in seventh grade history that monuments were about heritage, not hate. He needs to read what a monster war criminal murderer precious Gideon Harwood was. Congress of the U.S. House of Representatives. Oh no. I need to read down to Whoops. the end of every page. I meant to hit F. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your warm hospitality. Of course, we want to thank you and the Foundation for your continued support of our campaign. No matter what Judge Warren has seen fit to write, I am a tireless defender of the constitutional government and state sovereignty. All right, Frank. And will always work to promote peaceful and prosperous separation between the races. What year is this? 59, okay. Uh, let me add, it was such a thrill to see old Charlie Harwood again. Told him it was the most fun I'd had since he and I corked up together for the 29 Follies. And they say our people have no rhythm. Okay, Dorothy. Rosemary was tight with the straight-up white supremacists, and we're supposed to trust her over you? No, 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 no. We're gonna crack this. Corked up. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. I don't think I want to know. I mean, it involves dancing, I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, applied blackface. Shit. Why is that the label for that? Who comes up with these things? I guess racists. Uh, so this is the Virginia Archaeological Consulting Corporation. Yeah, also yikes. Uh, this letter serves to confirm the mutual suspension of our contract for excavations at the Black Haven Hall historical site. As stated in our previous correspondences, we are more than willing to continue with the excavations at Site 5. Although at this point, we find it extremely unlikely that we will be able to recover any material evidence from the Battle of Black Haven given the returns from Sites 3 and 4. Nevertheless, we have already documented numerous significant findings about the lives of Black Haven slaves at what we believe to be the near quarters and believe further investigations could greatly benefit your museum and education programs. Oh, sometimes done with a burnt cork. You gotta be real desperate to do some blackface, to be like, let's char up this cork. And, however, we are bound by a recent ethics agreement with other peer firms to a very specific set of protocols regarding the excavation of human remains. Uh-oh. As we reported in our previous letter, we stopped our initial dig at Site 5 when one of our contractors uncovered a bone we later confirmed to be a human clavicle, likely a male of African descent. Our ethics pledge requires us to immediately make a good faith effort to contact local descendant communities and to take any agreed upon steps towards rep uh, rep repatriation of remains at the expense of the client. As you have declined to pursue this course of action, we are, as mentioned previously, invoking the mutual dissolution clause of our contract. And formally, as a colleague in heritage work, I would still implore you to take these steps on your own. They will not. We will still prepare a report for the already completed work and have that presented to the archive at the original deadline. Oh my fucking god. Black Haven covered up a slave burial ground? This wasn't even that long ago, just before Helen. Shit, does she know about this?
she has the key in her desk. She knows about this. I should note that clock said it was well past nine. It was past 930. So we have been here for a while. Dear Mrs. Morris, I'm writing to summarize the findings and summary judgment verdict rendered regarding Jennifer Harwood's claim to membership on the board of the Blackhaven Hall Historical Foundation. As you are aware, all living direct descendants of Thomas Harwood or William Harwood are automatically granted the status of beneficiaries. Oh, with regards to the estate trust. Uh-oh. You will also recall the previous settlement between Jennifer and the land trust and the trust manager found that even though she had emancipated herself from Thomas and Linda following her time in rehab, she still maintained her status as a trust beneficiary and was entitled to the yearly dividend payment from Harcorp Industries as a result of the trust's initial investments in the company. Because the terms of the historical foundation bylaws are much vaguer than that of the trust, we argued that Jennifer should not receive a place on the board, but the Judge Wallace no, Judge Warren, as he was mentioned before, I said, that's a long-lived judge, has dismissed our lawsuit to prevent her from taking a seat. The judge made it very clear that any direct descendants can automatically claim trust benefits, the annual payment, and foundation board membership. While this outcome is disappointing, the judge also found that board members must be physically present to vote. And as Jennifer's last listed residence was still in Costa Rica, you likely do not need to concern yourself with this possibility in the near future. Whoops. Wait, hold up. Any descendant of William gets a share of 10% of Harcourt profits? They're like a Fortune 500 company. Even if there's dozens of current descendants, that would be hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. They've been trying to keep this from you for years, Dorothy. What if you're right? Forget researching here, you'd be running this place. Oh no. Oh, I see ADA mentioned. All right. Good old Helen. In regards to your previous letter concerning the Amer Americans with Disabilities Act compliance of the Blackhaven Hall Restoration Project, yes, it is true that certain historic sites are eligible for exemption if they meet the established test that compliance would threaten or destroy the historical significance of the site in question. Your argument that Blackhaven's long-established status as a ruin since 1781 would be imperiled by ADA-compliant accommodation is likely to withstand a challenge, particularly in our district court, but I'm not sure this exception is truly in the spirit of the law given the architectural character of your upcoming project. Nevertheless, I await your instruction on how to proceed. So, like, you're already doing significant, modern, fancy restoration work. I need to read down to the end of every page. Huh. Can't ask the Harwoods to do even one simple good thing. Hold up. This is the bird Dorothy mentioned. I gotta say, it does kind of look like a robin, but also in an African style. And look at the pattern. Didn't I see that earlier somewhere around here? I need to go check. Yes, this one. Probably shouldn't just be putting your hands on ancient shit. It's the exact same design. Even the feel of it is the same. It's like the same person did it. But where is that piece from on that? And they found this in the slave cabins. That means Rosemary and Blackhaven lied to Dorothy about her evidence the whole time. You were match. right, you were right, you were right. Okay, but what about the next two objections? Rosemary said Simon's story was false because Blackhaven's mirror didn't have a swan. Isn't there a mirror in the gallery? Maybe I can figure out why it doesn't have a swan. I should also call my mom. Maybe she can check out some things for me. Achievement unlocked. You were right. Yes, let's call your mom. 
one is dead. Okay. Helen. Hi, Mom. No, I'm not back home yet. I'm actually still at the museum. No, they're not gonna pay me overtime. They don't even know I'm here. Mom, I'm researching something and it could be really big, but I'm locked out of the internet and my phone doesn't get data out here. Can you see if you can find a contact number for a woman named Dorothy Mitchell? She's pretty old, but I think she lives in the area. Yeah, Mitchell with an M. I don't know if it has one L or two, just try both. You can just email me from my work address if you find anything. Thank you. I'll call you from my desk when I finish up. All right, mom, bye. Okay, I gotta go check the mirror. That telephone pacing though, very good. That would be the wise thing to do. What if someone comes back from their weirdo picnic? Is this the mirror? Well, here it is again. There's definitely no swan. I wonder what other info Black Haven has. Oh! Helen did say that they were going to be beta testing object scans. I wonder if I can scan for more info. Yes! Uh, ornamental mirror was originally one Wait. of a pair. Okay. This mirror was one of a pair? And they found the other? Ah! The swan! When Rosemary told off Dorothy, this hadn't even been discovered. Dorothy, you were right again. Your grandfather remembered. His mother. His grandmother. They remembered. She... Oh my God. She looked at herself in these shards. I can't imagine. Okay, there's only one more point left to prove. Let me go check my email and see if mom found anything. I should see if my mom wrote back. This is very cute. I mean, the story is horrific, but... Kendra, I looked up this Mitchell woman. It seems like she had a truly incredible life. Uh, what does she have to do with the Blackhaven people? It looks like she has... It looks like she was into history. Unfortunately, it seems she passed a few years ago. I found her obituary and attached it below. I also tried looking for her on Facebook, and I believe I found her grandson to Anthony. If he's still at the same place, I found his number in an old phone book. How's that for detective work? Call me when you're finished. I want to know what you're digging up on the job. Love, Mom. So, died in 2004. I can just, I can just see the design document for this game, where they imagine this stuff this being the player, figuring all this stuff out, then realizing asking a whole lot of the player. Yes. Uh, also, yes, Windows XP. Look at this, which is the only admins can hit the start button. All right. 
Well, let's call. Let's call Anthony. Uh oh. Oh. I guess you were older than it seemed looking at that picture. She didn't need the Harwoods' money, but the family needs to know she might be right. Anthony seems nice. Damn, can you imagine if he was at the next meeting with Helen? You have no data on which to base that information. All right, Dorothy. First, Blackhaven said you couldn't be a descendant from the Harwoods because the bird carving wasn't authentic. That's wrong. It looks just like Blackhaven's own pottery. Next, they said Simon's family was never here because their mirrors didn't have a swan. But oh wait, yes they did. Last, they say Simon had the wrong name for the creek at the mill. He said Hickory Creek. Blackhaven said Nicholas Stream. Ugh, how am I supposed to know what a creek was called 200 years ago? The model over there doesn't even show the river. Ugh. Let me call my mom real quick and thank her. Hey mom, thanks for sending that stuff along. Let me put you on speaker. Can you hear me? Are you by yourself? Yeah, mom, of course. So, Camera in what the corner. did you find out about this Mitchell woman? Mom, I, uh, I'm not sure, but I think Blackhaven might owe her family some money. Like a lot of money. And maybe some other things. Oh, did she do some work for them? No, Mom, it's it's a lot bigger than that. But I don't want to say anything more until I'm totally sure. I just have to check one more thing before I leave. It makes me wish I'd gone to hear her before she passed. Even the foundation name sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? One second, I'm going to check this. Chesapeake Black Excellence Scholarship Fund. Here's their page. List of projects. Wait. Oh my god. They're the chief sponsor of Lee. Kendra, baby. Do you know who this woman is? She paid for your scholarship. What? Dorothy, you're the whole reason I'm even standing here. there yeah mom I just that's crazy okay mom I promise I'll check in in just a bit thank you so much my pleasure honey just call me back and don't get into too much trouble I can't be calling grandma Daisy to bail my child out of jail <laughs> yeah yeah bye mom love you too late mom Daisy there was a map in the big house with the field of daisies it might show the real name of the creek. I've got to go check. But my badge was access was revoked to the house at five o'clock. I also have a sense of dread. And if there's a jump scare, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll be upset. Okay. Do we just go out to the house and assume the game will sort it out or do I now there's been no hint that I would go get someone else's badge and it would have stopped me at the door if I should have I just need to run up to the house and check that map this is scary as shit, like immediately. No, thank you. I could take it the most direct path. No fucking around with whatever's on those paths. <laughs> Why are you going to if use an electronic bypass for an old house? Which it might just be a magnet if I recall some of those episodes about electronic locks. Yeah, this doesn't really... I mean, what would they have jump out? Like, this, this is not a ghost story. Uh, and we know there aren't guards. Except on camera. The biggest thing would be if someone would check the camera, saw someone was still on site, and then came to see what was going on. And then startled me. 
So, I'm going to assume that door's not going to open. Oh, I think all of these have doors on them. Let's see. Oh! I could have sworn that was part of the hurry the fuck up. Maybe it's just a lie. Is that... That was there. I am behind on my lockpicking lawyer. I need to spend some time catching up. Yes, here's the map. And it wasn't found until 2006, so Blackhaven hadn't even seen this when they told her Simon remembered the Rome Creek. Okay, one last time. Dorothy thought her ancestors met at Hickory Creek, but Blackhaven said the only one with a mill was the Nicholas Stream. Let's see. There's a few little rivers here. Oh, I should use the key. Okay, stables, garden. Is there a Nicholas Stream? That's it. It's really there. On their own damn map. Also, Hickory a stream. Dorothy was a better historian than any of them. She really should have run this place. She probably should own this place. It might literally be in her blood. Wait. Dust. They could test DNA now. Family could know for sure if they're really hardwoods after all. Anthony, oh my god, what am I about to drop on you? I gotta find a place with some cell service to call him. Maybe out front on the park bench. This camera this this game loves its camera zooms to make things very clear. Take this shorter path. I do continue to feel like something is going to go wrong here. You know who should run this place? <laughs> oh, here we go. Achievement, let's do this. About to become Blackhaven's worst intern of all time. Best intern. Grandson of a Dorothy Mitchell? Who is this, anyways? You're with the charity folks. I have told y'all you should not be calling me at home. The estate handles all of her donations. No, no, no. Actually, I'm calling from the Black Haven Hall Historical Society. And, uh, Mr. Mitchell? We need to talk. to Blackhaven Hall. Ah. So, there it is. Holy shit. James Coltrane did all on everything on the looks like on the technical and artistic side like modeling and stuff. That's hardcore. Ah, there it is in its original form. <laughs> they gave it achievement <laughs> for the upcoming game. Holy shit. Well, that was a ride. That's the most racist shit that's come out of my mouth in a long time since the last time I played a game about race. I don't know. So that was a fun read. Uh, but a very good game. Not subtle. 
as we pointed out along the way. Uh, but I think it, uh, I think it works. I think it comes together nicely. It has the, the fact that the main character is clearly young allows for the degree of enthusiasm and sort of impulsiveness that happens in this sort of back half. Um, so yeah, fascinating game. So yes, this was by uh, Historiated, I'll say Historiated Games, I feel like there should be a, a noun after that. Um, this is their first game, which is a hell, a hell of a first game. It's quite good. Um, yeah, and and sort of on a on a technical level, like, or sort of in a design fashion, as as Greg mentioned, there you could definitely see like the bones of the game design doc there, uh, which is fine. It's cool. Um, there's a lot of writing involved. Someone put words to paper, wrote them up in cursive, like did all that stuff. Um, a Steam review from a history professor, professional saying the game is basically job simulator for me. That's that's cool. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's interesting. I don't have I don't have firm thoughts about this, but this is. The initial something's rattling around in my head, and the next time I stream, I might talk about it if, if anything comes of it. But whose whose voices were most present in the game? Right. So we're looking through the lens, through the eyes of a of a black woman, modern black woman. A lot of those documents were from the people committing atrocities. The tour is in the voice of people committing atrocities, um, but sort of the final, I don't know, redemption isn't the word, the, the final twist, the final exposure is happening through letters and accounts of black descendants, black folks. I don't know, just, I don't know that I, I'm not perceiving a problem, I'm just thinking through sort of where the the weight of the story is sitting. Um, but I like it. It's thought provoking. So, what do I do? I follow that up with news about other things going on. Holy shit. Um, something very exciting is that Gregory released a playtest version of a tabletop role-playing game recently. Um, Yes, it's about how only some voices are allowed to survive. That is very true. Um, and across multiple generations have wealth stolen and withheld. Um, yeah. So, uh, so Gregory released a game called Fusion Time, uh, which is a, uh, a tabletop role-playing game that does not have a GM, no game master. Uh, it's very fun. I've played it twice. I think probably I would say once in its current, close to current iteration. Um, but uh, I think the, the way it's described is um, a game uh, where your opponent has transformed and is threatening your home. And so you and your party engage in fusion, which I think of Steven Universe because that's what I've seen. Um, but uh, there are other examples Greg can list in chat. Um, but two or more of you fusing together, combining your powers um, to sort of take on uh, the opponent. It's very fun. It's very cute. It's very emotional. Um, so highly recommend. Uh, and that's, oh, Greg already put a link. Excellent. And then Voltron, Captain Planet, Dragon Ball, none of which I have seen. Um, on sort of the future proof games side of things, um, we alternate which months we do a podcast or a newsletter. So August was the month of the podcast, so that is out. Um, September we'll do a newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter, it's over at futureproofgames.com. Um, and uh, 
uh, podcast includes our dulcet tones. Newsletter in includes a picture of one or more of my cats. So pick your poison or do both. Uh, let's see. I think that... Oh, the uh, paperback books. So this is a revision on Rosette Diceless, our tabletop role-playing game of our own. Um, and the companion book that is going along with it. Um, the paperback versions are ready. So we got the proofs, the most recent round of proofs. Uh, we made some small fixes to it that don't require us to get another test run of prints. Um, so now we have to like figure out our schedule and sort out, make sure our digital versions are where we want them to be. Um, and then we'll announce some dates. So uh, that's very exciting. I'm ready to get this, these books off our plates, at least for this run. We're still having tr trouble with Kindle, but um, that's fine. We'll have, we'll have all the other versions out other than that if, if push comes to shove. Um, so last bit of news, Greg is streaming, should be streaming in two weeks. I don't know that they have picked a game, um, but over at futureproofgames.com slash streams, we will uh, we'll have, we'll update the schedule as we pick games. And we always welcome recommendations over on Twitter or here uh, for other games we should play. Typically indie games, typically something engaging with an interesting topic or societal or political or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I think that's all the news that I have um, at least noted down. So thank you all for hanging out with me on this roller coaster of a game. I mean, it wasn't a roller coaster in the sense of it being not a bad way, but it was a ride. So thank you all and have a delightful, uh, oh, call me about no, they do not have to be new games. Um, I am still often catching up on my sort of backlog of notable indie games. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll take all sorts of recommendations. So yeah. All right, thank you all.